Welcome to Understand Murdoch, a podcast from the Post and Courier, South Carolina's largest newspaper. Our award-winning reporters have spent more than a year digging into the Murdoch saga to bring you the latest news and in-depth analysis as we cover this story of drugs, deceit, and death in South Carolina's rural low country. But because this story involves so many people, including the folks of Walterboro, who've ended up hosting the state's so-called trial of the century, we're also covering what's going on outside the courthouse. That sound you hear? That's food trucks on the first day of the double homicide trial of Alec Murdoch. And on January 23rd, a lot of what was going on was Southern cooking. I want a sample. It's our smoked brisket chili. Yes, sounds awesome. Thank Absolutely, you. you could either down it or there's a spoon there, whatever's easier for you. To feed hundreds, potentially thousands, of people expected to come to Walterboro for the trial, city officials invited local food trucks to park outside the courthouse. The folks selling the chili were in the Live Oak Smokehouse. Then there was banana y chocolate, mama Mickey's, and blazing Blaine's deep fried goodies. There was even Tracy's elephant ears. Yeah, they wanted, oh, everybody wanted elephant ears, but so we just came out to, uh, came and grabbed them for them, you know. That was Jaheem Black, picking up some fried dough with cinnamon and sugar with his co-workers at Williams Seafood. Black doesn't have anything to do with the trial. He's not with the TV trucks parked outside the courthouse. He's not with the 300 or so jurors attorneys are screening to find 18 who haven't made their minds up yet about the case. He's not one of the legions of people following the drama from afar. He's just a nice guy who works nearby and is glad to eat something different for a change. I'm all for the food trucks and all, but as far as I don't think it was necessary for the case and all. Black is right that the trucks seem nearly as popular with the locals as they were with the out-of-towners. J.J. Lamb with Shorty's Smoking Butts said about 40% of his business were with people who pulled up in their cars and grabbed a plate. Today has been non-stop. Since we uh, breakfast was a little slow, but when lunch came around, this is our first break since 10.30. The food trucks are such a hit that some residents are asking why Walterboro doesn't have them all the time. The city is only about 5,500 people, with three places to eat downtown and a handful of fast food joints on the outskirts. The limited food options are the reason city officials asked the food trucks to come in for the trial in the first place. Walterboro isn't really equipped to handle a huge crowd. This is not, not a good situation to be in, but being that, we, um, we're, we're forced into it. We want to put on the best, um, best look we can. That was Scott Grooms, Walterboro's Director of Tourism and Downtown Development. He's heard some grumbling that the food trucks make the double homicide trial feel a little too much like a festival or a picnic at a public hanging. But Grooms has pushed back, saying that officials are simply trying to keep things organized and make the experience as pleasant as possible for the people who have to be in Walterboro. Maybe some of them will even enjoy it. And it's just a nice, quiet um, what I call a quiet southern town is what you expect to find like in the Andy Griffith show, that type of thing. And if the city sees an economic boost, so much the better. Here's Adele Goodman, who moved to Walterboro five years ago. I think that people are going to come here and they're going to say, yeah, this town's got potential. In the meantime, locals who want nothing to do with the trial, which has also brought plenty of unwelcome attention to this part of South Carolina, at least they can enjoy a little smoked brisket. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks. That's all for now. As always, stay tuned with the Post and Courier for the latest updates in this case. You can follow along at postandcourier.com slash Murdoch hyphen updates. Follow us on Twitter at Post and Courier, and we encourage you to send questions, feedback, and tips to our Murdoch email address. That's Murdoch at postandcourier.com.